Hello and welcome to week three of our web series. Now, of course, we're in lockdown, which means that Jez and I can't be together to make these videos, but we're still going to be making them anyway, and hopefully you'll still enjoy them. Now, this week, of course, is Palm Sunday. And so our question is, what does it mean for us that Jesus is king? And before we look into that, though, Jez, of course, made me get my shoes wet last week. So I have set him a challenge. Over to Jez. So for some reason, Nathan's still annoyed at me from last week for ruining his shoes. But uh, he's to set me a challenge this week. Apparently he wants me to make a donkey. No idea how I'm going to make that. But what I do have is a secret weapon which Nathan didn't anticipate. I'd like to introduce you to my new and improved co-host. This is Mr. Snoop. Say hi to the camera, Snoops. We're going to take the next hour to turn him into a donkey. Enjoy. Now, Snoop has been such a good boy. I think this is about as good as we're going to get. Oh, so you put your, your mask on? Can you your mask on for me? There we go. This is donkey face, donkey ears. Nice donkey tail. He's been a very good boy. He's going to get a lot of treats for being so good, aren't you? Got him. Let's give you another one. Oh, there we go. Good donkey treat for a good donkey. See, all this talk about donkeys has got me thinking about that first Palm Sunday. See. When we think of donkeys, we tend to think of quite lowly creatures, quite disgusting creatures, or perhaps we think about the time we rode one on a holiday. But in the ancient world, donkeys were a sign of royalty. A donkey was an animal fit for a king. Now, this, this was probably a little bit less by the time Jesus was around, but the connotation would have still been there. People would have still seen the donkey and gone, wow, that's the sign of a king. And there are different animals which a king might ride, though. The, the king might ride a horse, if he's going to war. So horses were very much a sign of war, but a donkey, while still a royal chariot, was a sign of a king in peacetime. So we're now going to go over to our news correspondent who's going to tell us a little more. Welcome back. As many of you know, we're in the middle of our annual Passover festival in Jerusalem. We now go live to a member of our local cleanup crew who has kindly agreed to be interviewed. How are you doing today, Harold? Unbelievable. Every year it's always the same. People travel to Jerusalem, drop all their mess along the way. They don't even try and clear up after themselves. Branches everywhere. Cloaks, old tubes of Pringles. Makes me sick, it does. You can be a sweeper for 10 years and still people manage to surprise you with the mess they leave behind. Well, why don't you tell us what's been going on down there? I've not seen this much mess since, mess since after that Justin Bieber concert. Oh, he's, he's not back in town again, is he? Nah. Oh, thank goodness. I heard it was that Jesus bloke, you know, the one from Nazareth. Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth? Yep, that's the one. I heard he came riding into town on a donkey and the crowd got a little overexcited. I could hear them all the way from Bethlehem. Hosanna, they were shouting. Hosanna to the son of David. A bit overexcited. <laughs> that might be a bit of an understatement. Looking at the state of those roads, what was it? Some sort of a PR ex exercise? I heard it had all been prophesied. Oh, don't give me any of that nonsense. You don't believe in any of that hocus pocus malarkey, do you? Don't you remember Sunday school? That Zechariah said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Oh, so, so some sort of king then? Well, there was certainly a donkey and a rejoicing crowd. I suppose he must have been. So what does this mean then? Is he going to be our ruler? Is he going to rule over us, make us pay taxes? Perhaps he's going to lead us into war? I don't know, Jeff. Guess we'll just have to see. I reckon it's going to be a cracking Passover this year. Are you sure? Don't you think this time next year no one will remember who that Jesus bloke was? Uh, 
I think this was something special, Jeff. I reckon we'll be talking about this for years. Well, they may think he's their king now, but who knows what they'll think next week. Don't you think those crowds are a little bit fickle? We'll see, Jeff. We'll see. Well, there you have it. A crowd declaring their king has arrived, but will he stay their king or will they turn on him? More as this story develops. But for now, weather. So here is just a fun little prayer activity you could do at home. I have here, not very well, but I have drawn a donkey and I have also cut out its tail. And I'm going to stick it up later on my wall and I'm going to play pin the tail on the donkey. So you could do that too. I'm sure you'll draw some better donkeys than I have. But as you're playing that, you could be praying as well. You could use it as a prayer activity to thank Jesus for what he did for us. The fact that he came down to earth as king. And of course, we know what happens on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And that's coming up very soon. And we could be praying and thanking him for what he did for us. So, Nathan, what sort of people do you have to submit to in your day to day life? Oh, well, it's interesting actually using the word submit these days because it's always given really bad connotations, yeah. but I don't think it's supposed to be. It, I think it's been twisted into this way of like, oh, I hate that because then I have to give in to the will of someone else. Mm. But to me, if someone's in authority over, over me, actually I should be respecting that authority at, and doing as they say. So the people I've submitted to in my life, uh, when I was young, my parents, and of course I still do, mum and dad, um, I do what they say. When I was in school, teachers, they had that authority because they were there to teach me and to keep me safe. And now the government, who's also trying to keep us safe, and my boss as well, Jim. <laughs> Hi Jim. So yeah. So if you had to design the perfect leader, the person you'd most want to submit to, mm -hmm. what would they look like? So I think the perfect leader would need to be someone who cares for the people that they have authority over. Um, who is the one that will make decisions and they may even have to be the hard decisions. Actually a lot of the time um, I think it, it's a bit like a parent. Because my parents love me, and yet sometimes they would discipline me. And sometimes, when you're young, that doesn't make sense. You're like, well, but you said you love me, so why are you stopping me do things? But actually, it's only because they care about you and they want to keep you safe. So, for example, when I was young, uh, one time I, I was going, the oven was on, and I was going to go and touch it. And my parents told me off for it and, and, and pulled me away from it. And at the time, that seemed like, oh, my parents must hate me because they're stopping me do something fun. But actually, now I'm older, I know that if I had touched that oven, I would have gotten really burnt and been in a lot of pain. But they were stopping me because they loved me and they were keeping me safe. And I think that's what a leader um, is, 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 that's what a perfect leader should have. So our theme today is Jesus King. Um, so we're thinking about what sort of king was Jesus and how can... Uh, how is Jesus as king today? Mm -hmm. So was that the sort of leader Jesus was? Was he a king who was like that or was he different? I, I think Jesus was a, a king like that. If you, if you look at the Gospels, he loved people. He was there for them. He, he healed them. He, he spoke to them. He taught them about God and tried to lead them back to him. He, he wasn't there to, to come in and, and just tell people what to do for the fun of it. Actually, he was doing it because he cared for them. And he, he went that one step further and sacrificed himself for the people. That's how much he loved them. And so I think he is, is a leader who actually is really easy to submit to because he is someone who has done something, given us this great gift that we could never repay. And he's a leader who loves us and, and wants to care for us. And sometimes that does mean actually disciplining us and taking us in a different direction than we're supposed to be doing. But thinking about how much he loves us, I think that's actually something that we should be doing. Mm. It's, uh, I, I love how just kind of subverts that expectation mm. of king. You know, when we think of kings, we think of sitting high on high and ruling yeah. over. But Jesus came down and served, didn't he? Mm. So... If that's what Jesus did, what's our role in that then? How do we live our lives like Jesus is king? 
Well, I think for firstly, it, it, it's thanking him for all that he, he has done for us. Um, and that can be shown in worship and in praying and in reading our Bibles, talking with God. And I think it's then, often we pray, you know, we want, we want to give our life to him. That's, that's what kind of becoming a Christian means. And again, that might mean sometimes doing things that maybe we don't want to do, but knowing that actually God has our best interests at heart and doing them anyway, but also doing them with a heart uh, of gratitude uh, and longing to do it. So, for example, um, Jesus told us to tithe. That means giving money, uh, giving sometimes we might think our hard-earned money, but actually God has already given that as a gift, and he just wants us to give some of that back so that actually he can use it um, to forward the kingdom in, in some way that we can't even see sometimes what he has planned but his plan is bigger and better than what we know and what our plans are. So it, it's about just following him with a thankful heart. Well, let's pray on that. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a good king. We thank you that you're a king who loves, a king who cares for us. We thank you that you're the best kind of king that there is. And we pray that you help us to fulfil our role in that, submit to you but to do so gladly and willingly, knowing that your rule is righteous, knowing that your rule is just, knowing that your rule is good. We glorify you as our King, Lord, and we submit our lives to you. Amen. Amen. Now, there may be some people watching this and thinking, actually, I've never given my life to God. And it's such a simple thing to do. And if you're at home watching this and thinking, I want to do that, all you have to do is actually ask God into your life and say, I'm sorry for the things that I have done wrong. And actually over the next few, over the next week, we're going to learn about even more detail what Jesus did for us. Um, but if you want to, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. If you want to follow that prayer, just say amen at the end. And yeah, you're, you're welcomed into the family of God. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we're sorry for the things we have done wrong. And for when we have tried to do things our own way. Lord, we receive you. We submit to you as king of our lives. And we look forward to being able to have a relationship with you. Amen. Amen.